Next thing, my finger is getting stuck. So patients will all often say they are having some significant pain in the palm of their hand, kind of localized right there to the, the middle of their palm or at the base of their finger. And they'll tell me that that finger gets stuck in a locked position. And when they attempt to straighten that finger, it's extremely painful. And I would not be lying if I said that uh, I've heard a couple of four letter words when describing what that pain is like. So it can be quite painful. And, uh, and obviously it's not fun to walk around with a finger that's, that's stuck in a position um, like that or like that photo. Um, a lot of patients will also tell me that their pain or the locking of that finger is worst in the morning and then gets better as the day goes on. Um, they'll also may tell me that they can't make a full fist because it's, it's too painful. So what this is, is something called trigger finger. And it doesn't just affect your trigger finger or your index finger. The most common fingers that this does affect are actually your ring and your middle finger. So it can affect all the fingers, even the thumb. Um, so it's not just, not just your quote trigger finger. Um, this is caused by a form of tendonitis in the tendon that bends your finger. Um, what tendonitis is, is inflammation of the tendon. Um, and some of the risk factors are from repetitive use, diabetes, and this is actually associated with carpal tunnel syndrome um, quite frequently. So it's I, uh, not uncommonly diagnose both of these things at the same time in, in patients who are not only having numbness in their hand, but also having that, that locked finger. Um, so this is a good representation where you can see um, that red area, that's where the inflamed tendon is. And as that tendon enters your finger, it enters a series of tunnels. And if there's any swelling in that tendon, it does not glide through the tunnel properly and it will get stuck or locked on one side of the tunnel. So conservative treatment for trigger finger, you can try stretching, kind of bending and straightening the fingers that will help um, loosen up the tendon a little bit may help decrease some of the inflammation. Uh, you can try ice. That's always good for inflammation, especially if this is something that kind of just started in the last few days, some ice might help calm that inflammation down. And then you can also try some anti-inflammatories. You can do something um, that's you take orally by a pill like ibuprofen or naproxen. Or something that also works well is um, Voltaren gel or the generic name is diclofenac. And that is what we call a topical anti-inflammatory. So it has the same anti-inflammatory properties as ibuprofen, but it's in a cream form that you would just kind of rub directly on that area. So you tried, you tried that at home, it didn't work, your finger's still locking. What do you do now? Um, I usually recommend trying a steroid injection. As I said earlier, a steroid is a powerful anti-inflammatory. And two out of three times when I do this injection, it gives you full relief of your symptoms. Um, and, it, and it really cures the problem. And the reason why is that injection is directed right at the site of the inflammation and right where that tendon enters that tunnel in your finger. And it, it works quite well. So what happens the other third of the time? If that first injection doesn't work, or if it works for a period of time and then your symptoms return, say six months, a year later, we can either try another injection or we can proceed and do a surgical release of, of that, that pulley or that tunnel um, where that tendon goes through. I usually recommend if, you, if the injection unfortunately did not work the first time around at all, another injection does not have a great chance of working again. So I would probably recommend doing a surgery for that. But if you had an injection a year ago and it provided you 
10, 11 months of relief and now it's back again, we can definitely do another injection and I think have pretty good luck with it. Um, I don't typically like to inject the trigger finger more than three times. And the reason why is if we do too many injections of steroid too often to a tendon, it has the potential to weaken the tendon. And the last thing I would want is to, to do something that might cause further harm, like causing the tendon to rupture. So two to three injections spaced over a appropriate amount of time is completely safe. There are no um, major downsides, but I do kind of keep a close eye on making sure I don't inject um, the steroid too often to that area. So if you do need surgery, um, this is another one that I do under just local anesthetic. And sorry, these are just kind of some representations of um, what you get with the uh, steroid injection. And that's something we do in the office, um, takes you know, not more than a minute. And uh, again, I use the smallest needle possible and, and patients tolerate it quite well and usually have um, pretty much immediate relief of their, of their symptoms. Um, the surgery, again, I do it with you completely awake using only local anesthetic. Typically I will do this in the office. We have a, at our locations, we have small procedure rooms that work really well for these kind of simple and quick procedures. Um, so you would come in, I would numb you up. It would, I would give it plenty of time to set in. And then once it's numb, we would clean your hand really well and do the surgery. And then you just walk out and, and I, I see in a week or two um, to check on you. So it only requires about a centimeter incision. What happens is I go down and I cut that tunnel um, at a certain location where it is pinching that tendon. And then um, once that is released, the tendon is allowed to glide smoothly through the area uh, without difficulty. And I usually say you can go back to full activities in two weeks. Again, it's similar to carpal tunnel surgery where if you are doing mostly a desk job or something where you're not doing any heavy gripping, it's the sort of thing where you can go back to work the same day or the next day. If your occupation or activities um, involve a lot of heavy gripping like golf or tennis, I may say, take a couple of weeks off, let this heal. And, and then go back um, once, you're, once you're fully recovered. Okay, so the next one. This is one that commonly gets um, kind of mixed up with trigger finger and patients will say, I cannot straighten my finger and it is stuck. Not stuck down like this, but often stuck like this and where any attempt at trying to straighten that finger um, is not successful. This is the sort of thing that is usually painless. It doesn't cause pain. Um, it develops over a long period of time. So patients may tell me that, hey, I've noticed this thing on my finger for a long time and now my finger is kind of bending down and I can't straighten it anymore. The other thing people may tell me is that um, they have a family history of this or they remember one of their parents having um, this same thing and so they may already know what it is or at least that it runs in the family. So what this is called is Dupuytren's disease and this is named after a French surgeon and it is a disease but that's a bit of a misnomer because it is quite benign and it's usually um, linked to your, your family history. So this is totally benign, it's not cancer, it is a nuisance, um, not to say that, that it doesn't cause issues, but what it is is a nodule of, or a contracture of the finger caused by some scar tissue. And the, the tissue underneath the skin in your fingers and on the palm of your hand is quite thick and in certain people, it may develop into some nodules or contractures as you get older. And uh, it's, it's quite similar to scar tissue. So 
this is kind of what it looks like. You can see that um, this patient's middle finger, it appears that kind of the tendon is sticking out of the palm. That's actually not the tendon, that is the Dupuytren's contracture. We, we frequently re refer to the, um, that, that bump or lump as a nodule or a cord. Um, this is actually more common in males and especially in patients of Northern European descent. Um, also known as the curse of the Vikings. So there are usually a couple different stages for Dupuytren's disease. Um, usually the first thing to present is a nodule of the palm or in the finger. So that would be a hard lump that, that you may feel. Um, sometimes this can be a little bit painful when it first starts and it's related to the inflammation um, that's occurring in that area. But typically that pain goes away pretty quickly and this is not a painful condition. That nodule may continue to grow and form what we call a cord. And the cord is when that nodule grows and starts to bend your finger down into a bent position. And so if you look at stage two here, that finger is kind of partially bent down and there's that um, fibrous cord going across one of the joints in your finger, causing it to stay bent. The later presentation of, of Dupuytren's disease is when that finger is fully bent into the palm of your hand and it will not straighten it. So that's what makes it different than a trigger finger. A trigger finger, you can usually straighten, although it's painful. Dupuytren's disease, that finger will not straighten um, on its own. It, it requires something more. So is there anything you can do to prevent this? Unfortunately not. It is very hereditary. It runs in families. Um, it has a way of just kind of progressing as it wants to progress. So there are unfortunately no medications or other strategies to really prevent this. Can you do some stretching? It may help a little bit at the beginning, but once that cord starts to develop, it tends to continue to progress. Um, so stretching is not helpful once, um, once it gets worse. Um, can something be done about it? Yes. Um, there are lots of different, um, options for, uh, for how we, how we can treat this and we'll go into those now. So, um, again, when, when do you need to come to see me? If you notice that you have some of those hard nodules and, you know, those aren't causing any pain. I think you can rest assured that they are most likely benign. And as long as they stay the way they are, there's really not much work for me to do. However, if you find that you cannot put your hand or finger flat on a table, similar to this, that's when you kind of need to come and see me so we can talk about what to do. Um, this is the sort of thing where it is benign, but it can be pretty bothersome um, to, uh, to deal with, especially if that finger is getting caught very often when you're trying to do daily activities, put on gloves, that sort of thing. Um, so when, once you can't put your hand or finger flat on a table, that's a good time to come and come and see me. So treatment options, there are three main treatment options for this now. The first is something called a Aginase injection, and you may have heard of this. It's uh, the trade name is Zyaflex. Um, John Elway had a commercial for Zyaflex a year or two ago, so that's the most famous person I've seen um, uh, advertise this. There's also another technique called needle aponeurotomy, and finally, there there's also a uh, surgical excision procedure for this. So we'll just kind of go over those briefly and and kind of the pros and cons of each. So the collagenase, um, this is a picture kind of representing what the collagenase is. And the collagenase is an enzyme that will help dissolve that cord or that contracture. So what happens is you come in and I inject that collagenase or that enzyme into the cord. And that 
enzyme will work over a period of 24 hours to help weaken the cord. I use the analogy of it's kind of like acid dripping on the rope. You know, the acid drips, 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 and it's a gradual kind of fraying or um, loosening of the cord. And then you come in the next day, and once that cord is, is nice and loose and the tissue is softer, I'm able to straighten your finger and get, get it usually all, all the way straight. So the collagenase, kind of the, the pros is that it's, it's not surgery. Um, it can be done as an outpatient in the office. There are needles involved, so I will not claim that it's completely painless. But I think the main advantage is that it works really well and it doesn't involve a big surgical incision as, as we'll go through a little, little later. So the other similar option is something called a needle release fasciotomy or a needle aponeurotomy. And what this is, is this procedure is also done in the office. It takes a little bit longer than the Xiaflex, but it's, it's only one, one visit to, uh, to the office rather than to like the Xiaflex. So what this involves is putting in a little bit of local anesthetic or lidocaine um, to where that, that contracture is. And then I actually, with the needle, go in and kind of use the needle to trephinate or kind of lightly touch the cord and cause kind of some micro cuts within that cord. And by doing that, you're able to kind of gradually loosen it up to the point where you can straighten the finger again. So this is another good option, something that um, I find to be very successful. And I would say that the two advantages or the big advantages of this needle aponeurotomy procedure and Xiaflex is it doesn't involve surgery. Um, and it's something that can be done in the office and the recovery is usually pretty fast. I expect um, soreness for about two weeks and you, you're probably going to have some bruising in the palm and, and the finger uh, depending on where that contracture is. But it's something that, um, that gets better pretty quickly. The thing about Xiaflex or a needle aponeurotomy is it does not actually remove any of that Dupuytren's scar tissue. It just weakens it to the point that you can bend your finger or straighten your fingers. So it's the sort of thing where I don't tell patients that their finger is gonna look entirely normal because some of that tissue that's not causing a contracture is not being removed. So I'm not making an incision and I'm not taking it out. The only way to do to, to take anything out is to make a surgical incision. And depending on where that contracture is and how bad it is, that incision can be pretty good size and, um, and the surgery can, can take a little while. And the reason why it takes a long time is there are some very important blood vessels and nerves that often run very close to those cords and uh, you have to take great care to make sure you're, um, you're being mindful of those important structures that um, obviously I would, would never want to damage. So surgical excision is successful, um, though I think the downsides of having general anesthesia and having a big, bigger insert, uh, incision on your palm um, outweigh the benefits of, of doing um, the previously described procedures of the Xiaflex and uh, needle aponeurotomy. And certainly, um, if you see me in the office, if you find yourself um, with Dupuytren's disease, we can certainly delve into kind of the pros and cons um, for all of them a little, a little more detailed. 